Today I want to cover connecting your NAS directly to your PC to maximize your data transfer and to take advantage of high-speed network connection without investing into high-end equipment. If you want to learn more about how you can do this, then watch the rest of this video. And if you haven't already done so, then please subscribe and click that notifications icon so you'll be notified of any new content. Most of us want to get maximum performance from our NAS units, and the idea of having high-speed network connections is pretty appealing. However, upgrading switches, routers, and possibly cabling can be pretty cost prohibitive. Depending on your needs, there's a low-cost way that you can take advantage of getting either 2.5, 5 gig, or 10 gig connectivity to and from your NAS with a pretty low investment. So let's take a look at how we can accomplish this. To better illustrate how this works, let's look at this chart showing a traditional network. As you can see from the chart, we have a PC with a 2.5 gig card and a NAS with a 2.5 gig card going through a 1 gigabit switch. The effective performance of this will be 1 gigabit. You'll not be able to take advantage of or utilize the performance of the 2.5 gigabit devices. Now if we look at this chart, we can see the PC is connected directly to the NAS, so it can take full advantage of the 2.5 gig performance at least to and from the NAS. In this configuration, the NAS will be configured with a virtual switch to allow the traffic to pass through for internet access and access to other devices at the slower speed without impacting the high speed connection to the NAS. So now let's see how this is done. I'm going to use a, a QNAP 5 gigabit USB adapter and a 2.5 gigabit uh, USB adapter in my PC. Currently I have both going to a 1 gigabit switch, much like you would have in a traditional normal setup. So let's run through a quick test so we can see the current performance and can see the difference it's going to make when we hook it up directly with using faster inter interface devices. As you can see, as the test is running, I'm getting pretty typical 1 gigabit performance. So when this finishes, we can go through how to set up a direct connection. I'm going to plug in the QNAP 5 gigabit USB adapter first and create my virtual switch first. This makes it a little bit easier and takes fewer steps to accomplish the same thing. I'm going to be leaving the cable that's plugged in from adapter 1 on the NAS unit to the switch so that I'll continue to function as normal. But now it's going to become part of the virtual switch which will allow my directed connected PC to actually access other devices as well as the internet. Next I'm going to move the connection from the PC that was going to the switch and move it to the QNAP USB 5 gig adapter that I just plugged into the NAS. Again since we are connecting directly to the NAS it will be able to operate at the faster speed in this case two and a half gigabit. I want to point out that the reason it's only two and a half gigabit is that the max connection of the PC adapter if both had a 5 gigabit adapter, then you would be able to connect at the 5 gigabit speed. But for this experiment, I'm just showing you you have the ability to mix and match different devices, knowing that it will only be as fast as the slowest device. So in some cases, you can even attach a 10 gig adapter or whatever it is that you have. So let's log back into the NAS so that we can see how to create a virtual switch. Okay, now that we've logged into our NAS unit, Let's go through and see what it takes to create a virtual switch and then we'll go ahead and test this thing up to see how it works. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to need to go over to where it says virtual switch. Now if you don't have this icon, you can find it up here. If you do a little quick search for network, you'll find it listed here. Go ahead and click on network virtual switch. Now what it's shown us here is adapter one is connected and that's the one as I mentioned earlier that's still connected to the switch. So we're now going to go over and see the interfaces. And if we look at the interfaces, we'll see all the interfaces that are attached to this device. So as you can see, I got quite a few of them here. But the one that we're interested in is the adapter one, which is our the one that's connected now, which is our one gigabit going to the switch, you know, access to the whole world. And then adapter five, which we're going to connect directly to the PC. Um, and that's the important one that we need to understand. So our job now is to bridge these two. So now that we've seen that it's adapter one and adapter five, we're going to go over to virtual switch. Now we're going to say add. And we're going to go to basic mode. 
and we're going to select adapter 1 and adapter 5. And I'm going to hit apply. Okay, it's going to warn me that the IP address may change, and that's okay. So I'm going to go ahead and click yes. Again, if you don't have the Q Finder, I would suggest you get it. It's a great little utility. It takes a couple of minutes. And what you're most likely going to find is that your IP address is going to change. So at this point, I'm going to actually plug the PC into the USB, and then let's see what happens. Okay, so I've disconnected the PC that was going to the switch, and I've now plugged it into the... Um, QNAP 5 gigabit switch. So now let's take a look and see if anything's changed. And it's no longer responsive. So what I'm going to have to do now is close this. Okay, so it looks like it's come up with the same IP. So let's go ahead and log in and make sure it works. And it does. I don't really need to log back in. I just want to make sure it was launching the right console. What's important at this point is how does it work? So a couple things we're going to try and do here. First thing is let's make sure that we have internet access. And we do. Let's just go ahead and run a speed test. Okay, so we've completed the test. We now understand that it's working. Um, and now let's do an actual speed test copying that same data that we did before. This time, let's see if it's any faster. All right, so let's go ahead and copy the same files we copied on the one gig test. And let's see how the performance has changed. So as you can see, we're getting significantly more speed. So I'm getting about 230 versus the you know 90 that we were getting 90 to 100 that we were getting on the on the one gig performance so just to be clear this performance is only between the pc that i have directly connected to the nas um, that's important to understand because unlike having a, a switch where you could connect a bunch of the devices and this is actually saving us money but in most of the time most cases there's only one or two computers in the house that really need that extra speed. Usually the, you know, the one that does photo editing or video editing or a lot of data transfers, Plex, whatever the case may be. So if you can pick that one PC and hook it up directly, you basically go, ha go around the need for having, you know, additional cabling or additional switches that can cost you quite a bit of money. This um, and I'll put links to both of these USB devices that I that I'm using. My, the only real limitation is that the USB device has to be QNAP compatible. So if you can get a cheaper one and make it work, it'll be just the same. Um, I happen to be using the QNAP 5 gig adapter, which gives me a little bit more range. But the 2.5 gig USB adapter I'm using on the PC is really, really inexpensive. And I'll post links to that. So if you want to check that out, there are affiliate links. So anyway, I hope that answers the, the question. In closing, I want to mention that many of the new NAS units, as well as many computers, come with 2.5 gigabit built in. And if you're lucky enough to have a, some current hardware, it may not cost you anything to hook things up this way. The other possibility is if your NAS unit has a 10 gigabit built in and you want to hook it up using this method described, you might be able to get low cost 10 gigabit to your PC. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you found it helpful. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe, click that notifications icon, and we'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.